Hi everybody, it's Miss Hicks, and I'm going to take you through this Unit 3, Days 1 through 4 review. Make sure that your name's on this bad boy. Alrighty, here we go. Find a slope with a line between the following points. You must show work. Alright, so that means that we are using that slope formula, and lo and behold, there's that slope formula right there. So what I do is I name these my x1, my y1, and then I name my x2 and my y2. And from here, we're just going to plug and chug. We've got y2, which is 6, minus my y1, which is 1. And we're going to take that over my x2, which is 8, minus my x1, which is 7. And from here, I'm just starting to simplify through. We've got 6 minus 1 gives me 5. 8 minus 7 gives me 1. Okay, so your slope is 5 over 1. I would reduce that, and I would make that a slope of 5. Okay, so m as in slope. And we're going to just keep doing that over and over again. x1, y1, x2, y2. y2 is 6 minus y1, which is negative 12. Notice that negative, negative there. And that is over x2, which is negative 6, minus 3, which is my x1. From here, that negative, negative actually just makes a positive. And so I have 18 over negative 6, negative 3 gives me negative 9. Again, reduce this bad boy. 18 divided by negative 9 is negative 2. All right, going to move some stuff to prevent running out of room. Okay, and from here, same thing, x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, y2 is 1 minus y1, which is negative 1, so that minus minus again, and then I've got my x2, which is 4, minus my x1, which is also 4. From here, that minus minus makes a plus, so I get 2 in my numerator, uh-oh, 4 minus 4 gives me 0. If I end up something where I have 0 in the denominator of my fraction, that is what we call undefined. It doesn't exist in our mathematical wor world to divide by 0. So that slope is going to be an undefined slope. Okay, so it is a vertical line that goes straight up and down. All right, find the slope of, huh, find the slope and y-intercept from the graphs below. Okay, I always like to start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where my graph crosses this big, bolded, vertical line. And we're going to find that as a point. That happens at positive 1. These are my positive y's, so my y-intercept is at positive 1. And then I'm going to look for another pretty point. A pretty point is just where our graph crosses at a nice part of the grid, more or less. Okay, and then I'm going to count my rise over my run. Keep in mind, when I rise this time around, I'm actually going to rise downward. So I'm going down one, and I'm going over one, two. So I've got negative one over two, and that would be my slope. You could try that again and test it out, and you go down one over two, down one over two, and so on and so forth, and that would be your slope. Okay, same idea here. We're looking for where our graph is crossing this lovely y-axis, and it crosses at positive 2. So my y-intercept is going to be at positive 2. This time around, my pretty point is about here. And when we count, this time we're going up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So my rise was 3, my run was 1, and that reduces to a slope of three. Okay, and you can test that over and over again, just finding pretty points on your graph, going one, two, three, over one, up one, two, three, over one to find your slope. Cool, 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 cool. Moving right along, find the slope and y-intercept of each equation and then use them to graph the equation. What's nice is that these are already in slope-intercept form, which means that we are looking at a y is equal, that's a highlighter, y is equal to mx plus b. Okay, so my b is always my y-intercept, and my m value is always going to be my slope. Okay, so looking here attached to that x or being multiplied by that x is my slope, which is one-third, and then my y-intercept is just hanging on on the outside at positive four. So again, start with your y-intercept when you graph. From the origin, I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, and plot a point right there. And then I have my rise over run. So I'm rising one, and then I'm running one, two, three, putting my point right there. Okay, so get rid of that other one. Yeah. 
Okay, as long as I'm following that same pattern, I can go in the opposite direction. So I can go down one and left one, two, three, finding my point right here and getting rid of all of the points that kind of took me there. I always tell my students to graph this edge to edge and then draw a nice straight line that connects them with arrows at the ends. All right, so the slope is attached to that x, so my slope is going to be negative 2. Because there's nothing after that x, we actually have a y-intercept at plus 0. And that just means that our y-intercept is at the origin. It's right where those two axes intersect. This time when I do my rise over run, okay, a slope of negative 2 is the same thing as saying negative 2 over 1, where my rise has me go down 2 and my run has me go right 1. Okay, so we're going to go down, down 2, and run 1 down two and run one. Again, take away all of these extra points. It's just hard for me to show you the movements while I'm doing this on a video. You can not actually see me count my rise and my run. So that's just to show you what my brain is doing. All right, connect to those edge to edge. Nice straight line, arrows at the end. Cool, so far so good. All right, on to the next page. Same idea here. We have these graphs and we are looking for our slope. She's a little spicy because in front of that X or multiplied by that X is where our slope lives, okay? There's an invisible coefficient of one in front of that X. So that means that my slope is one, okay, which is also one over one. So that means I'm gonna go up one and over one, but starting at my Y intercept, which is negative two. So my y-intercept's at negative two, and I'm going negative two to start on that y-axis. From there, I'm gonna go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, and so on and so forth, going in both directions, creating a nice, beautiful, straight line, edge to edge with arrows at the end. I know I'm sounding like I am feeding a fed horse, but alas, the practice is great for us. So. Stay strong, stay in it, you got this. This one's a spicy lady. Y is equal to four, okay? So I don't see my X. I don't see anything in that realm happening here. Sorry, we got a little overwhelmed, okay? What this is really saying is that everywhere on my graph, okay, where Y is equal to four, I have points, okay? So that means that if we were to make a table, I would have a point at zero, four, and one, four, and two, four, and three, four, and so on and so forth. So you can actually see these as points, okay? This is a horizontal line that crosses the X axis, sorry, the Y axis at four, okay? So that point, that Y intercept at four, is where I'm crossing the y-axis with a slope of zero. You'll notice I'm not rising at all. I am merely running. Okay, so if I were to rewrite this full equation, it would actually look like this. y is equal to zero x plus four. Okay, so that zero x, is anything times zero gives me zero, and that's why this x ultimately goes away and we are left with the y is equal to four. So that's what that graph looks like. All right, we are in standard form, which means that we need to convert into slope intercept form. So 9x minus 3y is equal to 6. My first step always is to take this 9x and move it to the other side. If I move seats or if I make you move seats in class, it's generally not a good thing. It's a negative thing. It's a bad thing. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides, and I'm left with negative 3y is equal to negative 9x plus 6. Notice I didn't combine the negative 9 and the 6 together because they aren't like terms. From here, I'm going to divide everything by negative 3, and notice that I divide absolutely everything by negative 3. The negative 9x gets divided by negative 3, and the 6 also gets divided by negative 3. So I am left with y is equal negative 9 divided by negative 3 gives me a positive 3x, and then 6 divided by negative 3 gives me negative 2. So now I can tell that my m value is going to be 3, my b value or my y-intercept is going to be negative 2, and I'm just going to plot that guy the same way that I know and love, starting with your y-intercept, and I'm going to go up 3 and over 1, and I'm going to go up 3 and over 1, following that same pattern in both directions, 
connecting with a beautiful, lovely straight line arrows at the end. All right, same exact thing on number 11. We need to convert this from slope inter or excuse me, from standard form into slope intercept form, with my first step being to subtract x from both sides. 2y is equal to negative x minus 6. And then from here, what I need to do is divide everything by 2. So all three pieces of this get divided by 2. And I'm left with y is equal to negative 1 over 2x minus 3. Okay, remember we have that invisible coefficient of 1 in between that negative and the x. Okay, so we actually are creating a fraction slope here, which is negative 1 half. Right, so y-intercept is going to be negative 3. Slope is negative 1 half, which means I'm going to go down 1 and run 2. So starting at that negative 3, and I'm going to go down 1 and run 2. Down 1 and run 2. Following that same pattern, I'm going to go the opposite direction and then graph this line. Done. Okay, so really good practice in terms of going from standard form to slope intercept form um, helps us out a lot. All right, on number 12, same idea. We are going to work to get y by itself. So think get y by itself, x minus y equals 1. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Okay, you'll start to notice a pattern as we do this. We do it in the same order every time. So as long as you continue your practice and continue doing it in this order, you should be totally fine. Little invisible coefficient of 1 in between that negative and that y tells me to divide every piece by negative 1. Negative 1s cancel over here, and I do get y by itself to get that y equals mx plus b. The negative and the negative cancel each other out. Okay, so this is saying 1 divided by 1, which just gives me 1x, okay, minus 1. A positive divided by a negative is going to give me a negative. Y-intercept of negative 1. Slope of 1, which is the same thing as saying 1 over 1, if you're interested in that rise over run concept. Plotting your y-intercept to start, and then you're going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Somebody should make up a song that just says that over and over again. Kablam. Woohoo! Almost done. All right, so notice number 13. It looks kind of similar to when we did number 9. Okay, but instead of having it be y equals something, now we have x equals something. Okay, so x is equal to 4. That means we're missing our y. We don't really have a slope. Everything's kind of a disaster. But really what's happening here is that we are now crossing the x-axis instead of the y-axis. So this one here is my x-axis. It's my horizontal axis. And I'm going to go to where my x value is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is here. Okay, I am crossing that x-axis at 4, and this is my undefined slope again. Okay, so this slope is undefined. Okay, my y-intercept, well, there is none. If you look at our graph here, it doesn't cross our y-axis at all. In fact, those lines are parallel to each other, which means they will never Across each other. Okay, so one of the fancier problems that we will deal with, okay, are going to be the vertical lines and those horizontal lines. So as long as you get some good practice in and understand which one's which and why they're different, you should be totes fine. All right, on this one, determine if each point is a solution to the line given. In order for us to determine this, what we are going to do is we are going to plug in 3 as our x coordinate, and we're going to plug in 2 as our y coordinate. So everywhere that I see a y, I'm going to plug in a 2. Okay, those are multiplying together. And everywhere that I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 3. Again, multiplying 4 times 3, and then adding 1. From here, we're just going to evaluate. So 3 times 2 gives me 6. 4 times 3 gives me 12. And then you have to add that one afterwards because of PEMDAS. And so I have 6 is equal to 13. And that's where I always ask my classes, is this true? Is this a true statement? Okay, if it is not a true statement, and in this case it's not, 6 is not the same thing as 13, okay, we would say that nope, this is not a solution to the line given. And all that means is that if we were to put this into y equals mx plus b, graph that line, 
three comma two would not be a point on the line. Okay. It's just an easier way to do that. If you wanted to convert this into y equals mx plus b, graph it and then try and find that point, you totally could. It would just take a little bit longer. We're going to do the same thing for 15. Everywhere that I see an x, I'm going to put a 9. Everywhere that I see a y, I'm going to put a negative 4. So I have negative 4 is equal to 1 over 3 times x, which is 9, minus 6. Again, do your PEMDAS rules here, which means that I need to multiply 1 third and 9 to start. That is going to give me 3 minus 6. Okay, and then evaluating 3 minus 6 gives me negative 3. So does negative 4 equal negative 3? Is this true? And again, the answer is no. They are not the same thing. So that point is not a solution to the line. Sorry, I'm just trying to make a frowny face the best I can. All right, guys, that is it. Way to do it to it. If you have any questions, let me or your teacher know. And I hope you guys have a fab rest of your day. No, no, both frowny faces. See ya.